My name is Lulanga Sydney. I'm the tutor for Human Resource Management 2. Human Resource Management is how to manage people in the workplace. But as we begin, let's look at the learning outcomes. At the end of this course or at the end of this presentation, you should be able to attain certain competencies. And these competencies are what we mean by learning outcomes. So at the end of this course, you should be able to develop human resources planning. Uh, you should be able to plan. You should be able to realize the importance of human resources planning, to understand it fully and to put it into effect. You should be able to exercise modern methods of recruiting the right people required by the organization. You should be able to discuss the aspects of the social charter. Social charter, um, social contract, uh, social intelligence, all those areas will try to, uh, you need to understand them and try to go further into them. Now, how do we define human resources, resource management? It's a process of planning, organizing, directing or motivating personnel, controlling the procurement, uh, development, composition, integration, a maintenance and separation of organizational human resources to the end that organizational, individual and societal needs are satisfied. Now let's look at that. Planning, organizing, directing, controlling, it comes from the functions of management of Henry Fayo. And then procurement is buying. Development is transformation. Composition is uh, payment made in exchange for a certain service or product, uh, restoring the person or the, the st restoring the person to the original uh, position that the person was found, or even a better position. Integration, uh, bringing into uh, two or more parties together, uh, mingling, synergy. Uh, Maintenance is managing, uh, ensuring that things work better, and then separation the division of organizational human resources uh, to the end that organizational uh, entities, uh, businesses, individual, employee, and then societal needs are satisfied. Okay, so I hope that is very clear. And then when we, we are talking about human resources, we say human resources are certain areas that it needs to look at or that, that are involved in human resource. Okay? Human resources involves all activities used to attract. To attract, here we are talking about recruitment and selection, retain managing employees, to ensure that employees perform at a high level in meeting organizational goals. So what are we talking about here? We are saying being an employer of choice, you attract, you recruit, so there should be a recru uh, recruiting and selection uh, process in place that is based on merit, and then managing people, uh, those who are there, and those that join. And these activities are made up of a number of, um, uh, they're made up of a number of factors or a number of points. The first one which I've talked about is recruitment and selection. We have talked about that already. And training and development. Uh, the new employees, you need to induct them. You, uh, you, if you don't have an induction process in place, you can orient them, but induction is much better then you can also train and develop old and new employees in order to, to have the tools or the skills required to meet the organizational objectives, organizational goals, and then appraise the employees, uh, appraise their performance, and then compensate them according to how they perform. And once these people are appraised, they need to be given feedback in order to know where they stand areas of improvement, areas of positive growth, and areas that 
the employees need to work upon. And then pay and benefits, uh, it's also one of the areas that human resource uh, management looks at or looks into. And then the last one, uh, but not the least, is the labor relations, the employment relations, uh, triple tight relationships. So a triple tight relationship is employee, employer, and the state, and also the relationship that exists between an employer and an employee, and then amongst the employees themselves. So human resources management looks at all those. Now, human resource planning, uh, it looks at two things, uh, supply forecasting and demand forecasting. So human resource planning includes all activities managers do to forecast, uh, forecast uh, current and future human resource needs. Focus is looking ahead uh, to be able to tell. And this must be done prior to recruitment and selection. It must be done, uh, it must be demand uh, supply uh, driven. So demand focus made by managers estimate the number of employees, the qualifications uh, that the, 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 the company needs in future. And then the supply focus estimates the availability and qualifications of current employees and those in the labor market. So we need to be very clear on demand focus. Demand focus estimates the number and qualifications that the firm will need in future. And then the supply, those are available in the organization and outside the organization. Okay. Now, human resource components. The component uh, should consist with the others, um, organizational structure and strategy, uh, for example, recruitment. Uh, we develop a pool of qualified applicants, uh, selection, determine uh, relative qualifications and potential for the job, uh, training and development, ongoing process to develop workers' abilities and skills, and then performance appraisal and feedback, uh, provides information on how to train, motivate, and reward employees. Uh, managers can evaluate and then give feedback uh, to enhance work performance. Uh, when it comes to performance appraisal, it's important that the information that is attained from the performance appraisal is used to determine the training and development that the employees need to undergo. It also needs to motivate the employees and reward them accordingly. Uh, on training and development, we need to assess uh, the ongoing process uh, to ensure that employees' abilities and skills remain relevant and they continue to add value to the organization. Now, on recruitment, what we are looking at is that you are bringing in people who make a difference, who are going to add value, and these people should be uh, based on merit. The selection of these people should be based on merit. It should be based on talent. Now, on pay and benefits, uh, employees, uh, performing high empl performing employees should be rewarded with raises, uh, pay raise, bonuses, uh, increased pay provides additional incentives, uh, benefits such as health insurance, reward membership in firm, and then the labor relations here, what are we looking at? Managers need an effective relationship with labor unions that represent employees. Unions help to establish pay and work uh, conditions for employees. If management moves to a decentralized structure, uh, human resource management needs also to adjust accordingly. Now on recruitment and selection, uh, what we see here is external recruiting. Uh, for example, managers look outside the firm for people who have not worked at the firm before. Uh, managers can advertise in the newspapers, hold open houses, recruit at universities on the net, 
Um, so external recruitment is difficult since many new do jobs have specific skill needs. Um, we need we need to organization needs to be more proactive when it comes to external recruitment. Internal recruitment, uh, the, cha the, the interesting part or the positive part about the external recruitment is it brings in new blood, it brings in new workers with new ideas, play workers who help in turning around uh, the organizations. Internal recruiting, uh, positions are filled within the, uh, the firm. Internal recruitment has several benefits. Uh, the devil you know is better than the angel that you don't know. That's the argument for uh, internal recruitment. So the workers know the firm's culture, but may not have new ideas. Managers likely already know the candidates. It's cheaper. Uh, it also motivates employees because they know that there's a possibility of promotion or changing the job within the organization. Uh, but the, the challenge of internal recruitment is inbreeding, stagnation. So the, the company, there's a possibility that the company may not advance or the company may not uh, bring in uh, people who add value, people who help it to turn around. Outsourcing. Managers can decide to contract with outside workers rather than um, uh, hiring them. So you contract, you, you bring in people to do specific job over a short period of time, and then once that job is done, then you, you, you no longer keep those employees. Now, outsourcing is more flexible for the firm because the firm does not have long-term commitments to these employees. Outsourcing mostly provides human resource capital at a lower cost. Now, challenges of outsourcing is that managers lose control over output. Uh, these outsourced contractors are not committed to the organization or to the firm. They just come to do their work and off they go. Unions uh, are against outsourcing because for them, these have a potential of eliminating their members' uh, jobs. So selection tools. In human resource management, when we are looking at how do we select and recruit people, there are a number of ways that we can do it. Uh, one of them is through referencing. Uh, we get references. Uh, we can also have paper tests. We can have physical ability tests, performance tests, uh, interviews, background check information. All those are selection tools that will help us to get the right uh, candidates uh, for the right positions at the right time. Now the selection process, after a pool of, uh, of applicants are identified, qualifications related to the job requirements is determined. Now uh, how do we determine that? We look at the, we check the background information of the candidates and this includes education, prior employment, college major or university qualification, etc. Uh, we also look, uh, we interview these uh, employees. Uh, interviews could be done in different forms. Uh, most of the firms would use any two of the following. Structured interviews uh, where managers will ask each person the same job related qualification. Uh, and structured interview uh, held like a, a normal conversation, um, usually structured interviews preferred. Uh, bias is possible also. Um, then physical ability structure, uh, test uh, where you measure the strength and endurance of the candidate. Uh, physical ability test is mostly good for those um, physically demanding jobs. For example, uh, police force, anything to do with the force. Um, so the selection process, uh, we continue with that one. Um, paper and pencil tests, either an ability and personality test. Uh, ability test, you assess if the applicant has right skills for the job. 
personality test, you seek trends uh, relevant to the job performance. Uh, you also ensure that the test is, is a good predictor of the job performance. Now, what about performance tests? Here, what we measure is the job performance. Um, uh, for example, if you want to hire an administrator or a secretary, a minute taker, or whatever it is, uh, typing speed it could be one of the tests that you could give. Uh, assessment center uh, candidates are assessed on job-related activities of a period of a few days. Uh, references, outside people provide uh, candid information about the candid candidate. Uh, it can be hard sometimes to get accurate information when it comes to referencing. Uh, what about reliability and validity? Selection tools must be reliable and must be valid. Reliability, the degree uh, to which the tool measures the same thing each, uh, each time it's used. Uh, so uh, if you use the same instrument measuring the same uh, item, you should get the same results. So therefore we can say this is reliable. Scores should be close for the same person taking the same test over a period of time. That's what it means. Now validity. Does the test measure what, uh, does the test measure what is supposed to measure? Okay, so for example, uh, the instrument, is it giving us the results that we expect? Does the physical ability test really predict the job performance of a firefighter, for example, a, uh, a, a, a police officer, uh, a secretary? Okay. Managers, uh, the issue about reliability and validity is that managers have an ethical and legal duty to develop a go uh, good selection tools. So the the selection tools should not be questionable. They should eliminate bias. They should be fair to everybody who undergoes the same test. Um, now, what about labor union? The labor union um, is an organization with the legal authority to negotiate with the employer on behalf of employees. The labor union um, has the mandate of the employees to negotiate on its behalf uh, with the employer for better conditions of service, um, for better wages, uh, incentives, bonuses, etc. Uh, what about bon fide occupational qualification? Here we are talking about the individual characteristics that are necessary for performance of job requirements. Now, employees uh, versus uh, independent con con uh, contractors, they, we see that employees tend not to be, uh, tend to be less accommodative of independent contractors. Um, employees are more costly to the organization, but they are beneficial in a way that there's loyalty that comes with them, there's continuity, there's assurance of the conti uh, uh, of continued relationship with the employer, whereby independent con uh, contractors, they don't have loyalty, they don't have commitment to the organization, they're just there to perform a certain job. What about a union shop? We are looking at terms here. Uh, the union shop should be in the union, uh, there's a shop steward uh, who represents employees, is an employee himself, but he is an immediate representative of the employee. Now, training and development. What, 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 what are we talking about there? On training, we say uh, we teach employees or members how to perform uh, current jobs. Training helps workers to acquire skills to perform effectively. Development builds a worker's skills to enable the person to take on new duties. Deve uh, training looks at the immediate. Development is more long-term. 
So training uh, uses uh, is used more often at lower levels of the firm. Development is mostly used at higher levels of the firm, for example, managerial uh, level. Now, there's need also to look uh, to have what you say a needs assessment, which should be taken to determine what needs are in place and how this should be addressed. So the ty we have different types of development, uh, varied work experience, for example, for top managers to build expertise in many areas. Uh, workers identified as possible top managers are given different type of tasks and these uh, we identify which areas they need to grow in and therefore development, tra uh, development uh, programs or processes are put in place for them to be acquainted with that. So whatever training and development efforts are used, results must be transferred to the workplace. Now, what about right to work laws? Um, here, what we are saying is that work, uh, workers, you cannot force um, workers to uh, enroll or to become members of a union or to belong to certain societies. What about contrast ELA? interview base, uh, basis judgment of a candidate uh, upon a comparison with proceeding interview, interviewee. Uh, similarity error, bias towards an, a candidate that is similar to the, uh, to the interviewee. Okay. Uh, situational interviews, they give scenarios to candidates and judge their responses. Now let's look at job analysis. On job analysis, what we see there is that job analysis has two major components. There's the job description and job specification. Now, job, uh, job analysis is an act of examining positions within an organization. Job uh, description, which is a component of job analysis, it, it, it gives a narrative explaining the scope of a position, uh, job characteristics, uh, tasks involved in the position, uh, job requirements, uh, personal characteristics necessary to fill a position. Uh, now, performance appraisal uh, is a process of evaluating employee performance. Here, we are to, uh, what are we looking at? We are looking at job-related strength, development needs, progress towards goals. De uh, all these determine ways to improve to, to improve performance uh, and then we pay a, a promotional uh, dis pay and promotional decisions are made based on performance appraisal so performance appraisal is more systematic if it's more systematic it's better uh, and it helps to realize its goals performance appraisal uh, there are a number of ways to carry it out and there are also different tools that could be used in performance appraisal. So uh, a person should also be given that uh, right to appraise oneself. So that's what you call self-appraisal. Uh, peers, uh, people who work with this particular person should also be given an opportunity to appraise. Uh, and mostly these you see as part of 360 degree appraisal system where each um, and everybody has an opportunity to appraise oneself and to appraise, to appraise the other person. So uh, we have also central tendency error where everyone is ranked as average and then leniency, individuals are ranked higher than they deserve. Now who appraises uh, in performance? Sources of performance appraisal, there are a number of them uh, when it comes to 360 degrees feedback system. Supervisors, peers, self, customers, clients, subordinates all have an opportunity to appraise a particular person. So the person needs to appraise oneself. Peers also need to appraise the person. The immediate supervisors, uh, customers, 
clients, uh, anybody whom this person supervises can also appraise the person. What about pay and benefits? The pay level, how the firms pay incentives compared to other firms in the industry. The people, uh, the companies that are doing that in the, the same line of business, the way they pay their employees should be more or less the same. So managers can decide to offer lower, low or higher relative wages. The pay structure or clusters jobs in categories based on importance, skills and other issues. Benefits, some are required, for example, social security, uh, workers' compensation, uh, others, uh, health insurance, uh, daycare, transport, accommodation. Uh, these are provided at the employ employer's option. Uh, cafeteria style plan where employees can choose the best mix of benefits for them um, can be hard to manage sometimes um, but certain companies put that into effect. What about pay? There's base wage, uh, incentive pay. Uh, base wage, what are we looking at here? We are saying job based pay, uh, paid for the job that is done. Competence-based pay, uh, pay is linked to the job relevant skills, knowledge and experience. Incentive pay is linked to job performance, can increase motivation, uh, links employees to firm's performance, works well when employees, they trust the firm. So incentive pay should not be tried where employees doubt the firm. Individual incentives. Here we, are, we have a number of them uh, when we are looking at individual incentives. There's what you call piece rate, uh, where you pay for each unit of output. Uh, when you give someone a task, for each task that they complete, they are paid for that. Uh, commissions, you pay, uh, pay from percentage of sales or profits. Bonuses is a lump sum. Uh, payments for the work well done. Uh, for the profit that has been realized and then uh, it's shared according to how the person performed. And then merit pay is permanent increases in base pay linked to the individual's previous performance. Uh, seniority, it increases over uh, time. Uh, so in this uh, particular presentation, what did we see? we realize that human resource management is a process of planning, organizing, directing. It's key, human resource management is key in motivating employees. It can also demotivate employees. And it's also used in controlling the procurement, uh, development, composition, integration, maintenance and se uh, separation of organizational human resources to the end that organizational individual and society needs are satisfied and fulfilled.